Thank you, Jordy. I uh, appreciate the uh, introduction. Good morning, uh, all of you non-profiteers. Um, again, my name is Mike Dugan. I'm with Reference Solutions. I will be your cruise director, so to speak, uh, during this presentation. Um, I'm going to give you, you know, a, a brief run through about what we do, what we're about, take you through the uh, website and kind of uh, give you a little test run of uh, what we can provide and help you out with. Um, if you have any questions, um, please feel more than free to either type it in on the chat or after we're done presenting, um, we can take a question and answer session and go from there. If there's any uh, questions that I can't answer for you that I may not know, um, I'll be more than happy to get uh, the information back to Doreen or even you personally, if, uh, if that helps too. So with that being said, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Reference Solutions. Uh, we've been in business since 1972. Um, we have, we first got in the business as a list marketing company. Uh, what we had originally did was our original owner uh, purchased phone books from every city and county throughout the United States and had them uh, inputted into computer and created uh, lists that he sold around uh, to various companies, corporations, individuals um, across the country. And now, thankfully, we, we kind of spread our wings, so to speak. And in 1994, we came up with what we are now known as is Reference Solutions, uh, this library division. We were originally, uh, most recently called Reference USA didn't have anything to do with uh, with our changing our names due to any sort of uh, new ownership. We have maintained our ownership. Uh, we just wanted to kind of come up with a you know newer, fresher uh, name. So it's it's actually Data Axle Reference Solutions. But um, like I said, we've been in business uh, since 1972. Our business, our division since 1994, we've uh, deal with about, we're in business with about 75% of libraries across the country. Uh, we deal with libraries in the United States and Canada. Um, and that's pretty much it about kind of the history that I think that you would guys really even care to know about. So let's go on the website and you can see uh, this is our main page. Um, if you go to the very top and you see there's select language, we can have, there's a drop down box where we can go into, um, we have nine or 10 different languages that can be transcribed uh, to your needs. So that's available. Uh, also up at the very top in this tab for webinars, you can go in, you can always, we offer free webinars uh, to our library staff and patrons throughout the entire year. And these are, you know, just the different types that we offer. So you can always go back to these and we offer these, uh, weekly throughout the year. A fellow by the name of Bill Carlson usually does these. Bill uh, does a wonderful job. He's fun to listen to. He's funny. He's a lot funnier than I am. And um, he is out of town this week. So this is why I'm handling this one. So webinars, Learning Center is another one. Learning Center, it's uh, I always like to go to like marketing and training material. And you can go into, you know, like for the libraries themselves, you know, we can provide flyers, posters, brochures, but for you guys, for the nonprofits, if you want to get into like 
overviews within each section of our platform. Uh, you go into, I'll just pull up the business based database, gets into a little technical overview, but starts getting in kind of the the meat and potatoes, the weeds, so to speak, of, of what we're all about. Let me... Hold on for one second, I'm trying to... Okay, here we are back. Um, so again, webinars, learning center, and you can select a language too. So uh, those are all I think very helpful. Getting into actual your side of the story for nonprofits, you guys are always looking to network, I'm guessing with businesses and individuals that you wanna work with your, your initiatives. Two different areas that I would go to is U.S. businesses and U.S. consumers and lifestyles. I'm going to first show you a little bit about our U.S. business database. I'm going to pull this up right here. We have a quick search and we have an advanced search. I'm going to show you, like, for example, I'm going to pull up a company that's been in Omaha, Nebraska, which where we're located uh, for many years is ConAgra. I'm going to pull this up, type it in, and we're going to view the results. There's 72 results here at the top that show ConAgra. Um, we have corporate trees on the side, shows you all their address and locations, so on and so forth. Um, if I wanna just pull up this poultry division located in Alabama, I can pull this up and this is what's gonna come up on your screen. It's gonna give you a little bit of a rundown of the company, where they're located, um, how many employees, what their SIC and NAICS codes are. SIC codes are standard industrial codes, NAICS, and, and SIC codes have been around since 1937. They're known around the world. This is usually what uh, we do most of our searches with on the business side. We also have NAICS codes, which are right down here. Uh, NAICS codes are North American Industry Classification System. Uh, they were developed in 1997 uh, through NAFTA. So they basically deal with uh, companies that are solely in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. If we go further down, you can see like the different demographics that are shown business-wise at this particular location on the square footage, uh, the latitude and longitude factors. Sometimes that really comes into play with certain people with their searches and everything. May not hear, but I just wanted to just show it to you guys. Location sales volume, where we get this sort of information too. For all our business data, we we garner that from government data, yellow pages, utility connects, internet research, business uh, owner submitted data. Also, Reference Solutions is the only data company in the United States that telephone verifies every single uh, one of our businesses in our database. If we can't get a hold of that business, especially like during uh, COVID, we will make it be a unverified business and keep it unverified until we actually get a hold of these people. So again, we're the only telephone verified data research company in the United States. Um, going further down, you're talking about like business expenditures and everything, um, sales volume by year. You can see they had a nice little uptick in 2010. Uh, employee size by year, and then you get into different business history. Down here too, we have uh, UCC filings. 
UCC filings are, are going to be shown if they've ever taken out like any loan or whatever. And we'll see if there's, so there's nothing to report here for ConAgra. So they haven't taken out any substantial loans out recently. So this kind of gives you all this sort of information you might be looking for if you're trying to find um, a particular company. It might be a company that you've been doing, uh, that you've been working with, and you might want to just pull them up and kind of see what they have in their sick codes. And then we can go into another area of this. And I can show you where we can kind of uh, get more granular regarding that. So let's head back into, we're going to revise this. And instead of, we're going to clear. Now we're going to go into advanced search. Advanced search allows us, as you will see, to get very granular. Uh, there's all these different filters along the left-hand side that we can, you know, kind of pull and, like I say, get as granular and specific as possible. As you can see, all the records here are by verified businesses. And like I mentioned a little bit ago, it's phone verified and quality checked. We do have um, unverified business and then out of uh, business record. So the U and the C will indicate that. Currently, the total number of businesses in our database is 16,378,000. If we wanna go in, we can go in by a filter of company. Like I say, we can pull up, uh, let's say IBM, and we can add that, we can pull up uh, Toyota. And we can add that and we can get, you know, really specific if we want to just find out a little bit of stuff of where like these companies might be uh, located throughout the country or cities, so on and so forth. Um, we have another area where it's executive name, executive title, uh, executive title, we could go in and we can say, hey, let's pull all, you know, like chief operating officers, chief marketing officers, there might be a, a particular, you know, title that, you know, in the nonprofit business that you guys see that um, is very popular for contacts with your corporations. We have quite a few different uh, titles of which you can, uh, you can pull for. Um, executive gender, we can get into that. Ethnicity, we can get into that. Um, you know, if you wanna pull in, you know, female African-American CEOs from, you know, companies that have 500 more people in San Francisco area, we can do that. Um, again, same thing here with keywords and SIC and NAICS codes. Again, if you have a company like, let's say, ConAgra, ConAgra donates uh, a lot of different food in the Omaha area and, and also um, money to the local community, we can pull that up and look at their their sick code and you can see, you know, maybe find a, a, a common commonality that you can pull up other companies such as ConAgra with their description and kind of go after those companies. Um, you know, I was messing around earlier for for the SIC, I was just gonna type in donor. You know, everything that kind of comes up is donor recognition system, blood banks, plasma, sperm banks. Uh, you know, then you start getting into hospitals. All these different sick codes too uh, are a six digit SIC. And what Reference Solutions does too, is we have expanded that to get even more granular where we provide eight and 10 number 
SIC codes. So if like you're looking up like restaurants or whatever, and, and I could even, I'll show that to you because again, different restaurants can, uh, can help out on different campaigns that you're running. You can run, you can see like restaurants and it provides all the different types of restaurants and like pubs and here you go into really specific and you can see on the left hand side now, now you've got a nine digit SIC code where it's A&W restaurants and it's Burger King, IHOP, KFC, McDonald's, Perkins, you know, again, like I mentioned the word and I'm going to mention it over and over again, and I don't mean to bore you, but granular, you want to get, you know, as particular and precise as you can in your searches and you're able to do that with us here. Um, same thing, if, if I want to clear this field, we can go into, let's say like, a, let's say businesses, let's just pull up businesses in city and state. Let's clear this out and we'll go into city and state and let's type in San Francisco and we can pull up San Francisco and let's see the update count. So there's 73,330 different companies within San Francisco. Again, that's very broad. Uh, we could go in and, you know, we could get into, you know, put in certain zip code. Um, Doreen, can you provide me with uh, one zip code in your area? Sure, um, 94117. Nine four one one seven. Okay, so let's just do something like this again. We're going to update this count. Oh. Put in. A... Nine four one one seven. Yes, it's a Haight Ashbury, well known neighborhood. Okay. So it's still showing 73,330. There's something is off there on that. But nonetheless, you can see what we can come up with for the number of different businesses. And then if you notice down here too, right below it, there's 2,924 with email addresses only. We can provide you with email addresses though that is a cost that you would have to absorb, you know, as a company or personally through um, just by contacting us in uh, Reference Solutions and we would be able to sell you that list. Everything else, name, address, uh, zip, that's all free of charge. And you can find that uh, no problem. If you, if you want to break this down, we can break it down into charts. And you can see now too, where it's like of those particular businesses, there's 60, almost 6,900 that are physicians and surgeons. Um, there's almost 3,300 restaurants. There's 2,900 attorneys. So again, you can break it down by, you know, that particular SIC uh, code. We can look under in this bar graph of there's 60% or 35,000 companies, but you know, with one in four, one to four employees. And then the next uh, biggest margin would be five to nine at 22% uh, or 13,000. 13, so 
you know, again, you can you can look. All this information is here for you um, at your fingertips. Going back in, I can remove these and. There's a map based search to, like I said, we can do city state. You can do a certain radius um, around, you know, like a three mile radius around a, uh, a particular zip code area. You can pull by uh, business phone. You can, you know, by area code, uh, business size, like number of uh, employees. You might want, you know, one through a thousand. So you'd pull all these, pull that. And then again, let's pull up San Francisco. And there's 59,164. You know, again, it, it's, it's totally like up to you and how uh, you want to go about doing your searches and how granted or you want to get um, sales volume. You know, you can pull this up too. Again, we start at less than uh, half a million and then go all the way up to over a billion dollars. Just so you know, too, um, when it comes to sales volumes, we use algorithms and whatever we can get public record wise too. So um, sometimes our, our math, you may look at it and be like, no, oh, that's not quite as close as, as I know it to be. But again, it's because we use algorithms on that. Um, also, you can get into uh, ownership, public, private companies. Um, you know, you can pull only public owned companies, so on and so forth. Again, we try to make it as simple as possible. If you want to get into, you know, just a headquarter or a branch, or you know what, there sometimes it's like headquarter, single location too. Because you might have a company that just has a ton of different subsidiaries. Like let's say, again, I'm just throwing this off the top of my head, Subway. Um, you know, where they're at, they have thousands of different locations. You probably are looking for uh, the headquarters and everything. Um, financial data, you can, you know, if they're on the stock exchange, um, whether it's the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, so on and so forth, you can, that that is available. We provide that for you in case you want that. Um, credit, you know, rating, you know, you only want to, do business with everybody with excellent to good uh, credit, you know, you can delineate that too. Uh, also, if they have like a web address, you know, you can check that out with or without here. If they're a Fortune 1000, you know, if there's a yellow page ad size, all this stuff is available for you. I, I'm not trying to bore you with it, but I just want to show you what's what's available, like square footage, you know, you might be looking for, you know, smaller, um, more particular companies that might have, you know, small square footage. And, you know, you could see like in San Francisco, the, the one to nine area of businesses was definitely the uh, most prevalent uh, in the city, so to speak. So you can go professionals, you know, you want all the professionals, like let's say you might be trying to go after uh, a physician's office. You can do all professionals at that particular office or do the one professional, which is going to be uh, more times than not, it's going to be the person who it's the decision maker. Um, same thing too, at the very bottom, if you want to like omit Things you might have like uh, an, an area where there's tons of different zip codes and they're all around together, but you don't want, you know, a certain uh, neighborhood for whatever reason, you can omit that by 
entering um, into the area code box below where it's like, again, it's like 6A106. That's an area code in Omaha where I live in. You can just put that in and you're off to the races. So that is basically it regarding our business database and how you can go in and try to research different businesses. You can go into a lot of um, very, you can get very specific when it comes to, to businesses, as you can see too. The other area that I wanted to show you, the other uh, tab is US consumers and lifestyles. This is something, again, you can look up, you know, somebody by their first and last name, check that out here for a quick search, or you can go into the advanced search. Again, right here too, it's gonna to be contacts per household. Now, one thing too, I wanna to stress, you can get this information, but you can't get it where it's specific because this is all sensitive data especially with uh, California's uh, privacy laws that were just enacted. You can get that by purchasing that through us at, and they're very cheap, but again, you can still get an overall, you know, good overview of what you're looking for regarding lifestyles. I'm gonna pull up um, lifestyles here. And you can see, you know, again, we base all of these things off on a level of interest from zero to nine in our database. Zero means no interest, nine means, uh, you know, heavy interest. Selecting lifestyles from the categories below will only include a score of six to nine. So these are all gonna be highly used. And the way that we get these, is through, you know, again, for like cooking and wine, um, we're able to obtain data from people that want to fill out surveys, people that um, want to um, have subscriptions to like Sports Illustrated and so on and so forth. That's where we get a bunch of this information among other areas. But you can go into like, boom, voila, we have charitable donor, and we can go charitable donor, wildlife, environment donor, but we're gonna go charitable donor, let's go ages, let's go 35 to 44, um, let's do children present, um, Let's pick that and then let's do city and state. And again, we'll do San Francisco. And you can go here and then let's update the count. So there's 4,300 different contacts that we have. And if you wanna view the results here, again, showing that it's, we can't show that information, but we can show a summary of that. So you can kind of get into the weeds a little bit more where it's like, okay, you can see how many people are in, you know, this age or this salary bracket and everything for that particular, um, everything that we just pulled. So there's that. And that's basically it as it pertains to um, lifestyles. Does anybody have any questions? Doreen? Doreen, are you there?
Are we having some sort of technical difficulties? Dream? Jereen, are you there? Doreen? Doreen? Come in over. Mike? Yes. Sorry, my screen froze. So oh, gosh, no problem. I apologize for that. I have a question. Is there a way to search? Um, specifically for nonprofit organizations? Um, you can go in. We can, let's see what comes up for nonprofit. So we'll go into So you can pull up this SIC code 839998 for nonprofit organizations. Okay, and can you do a sample search just so we can see? Um, sure. So do intent. that and then let's do, we'll do Sam Fran again. Showing 733. Wow. And you know what? Another thing too that I want to mention, when you guys can, you can download these into like an Excel spreadsheet and you can do this by, you, you can download like again, 733 results. We can allow you guys to do that um, in groups of 250 at a time. So you might have something that comes in and let's say it's 10,000 results. And we have a security measure built in just in case people come in and try to scrape um, our data. So what we do is, and by scraping, it's basic, it's stealing. It's, it's trying to take large swaths of data and stealing it from us. So what we've done is through the San Francisco Public Library, we have, and it's the same way with every other library, you can download in increments of 250 at a time. So you can hit this upper left hand box where it says company name, and there's 25, um, and it'll go all the way through page 10 and you can download those and then you can switch over to page 11, then your next time through and start from there. Okay, it looks like we have a question. Okay. Um, I'm gonna see if I can unmute this person. Okay, Jordan, go ahead. Hi, uh, I, I posted a question in the uh, chat, but maybe you didn't see it. Uh, I was just wondering when you were in the uh, business section of this, uh, 
is there a way that this database could be used uh, by a consumer, almost like an alternate Angie's List or Yelp, that you could get a feel for uh, businesses in your neighborhood and uh, the quality of them? Or does it lack uh, the descriptors that would give you that kind of information? No, no. As you can see, that's and that's a very good question. You can see we could, you can get pretty darn granular uh, by all the different uh, options that you can choose from in the left-hand column. You can, yes, you can you can pull that up and you can check on. Uh, you can even pull up a map, and it'll show you the different markings like on uh, how many, you know, again, let's say you're trying to, and I'm just using this as a, as just a generic uh, example, but like, let's say you're trying to pull up widgets, widget pr producers, and let's say you want to see, you're thinking about starting your widget company and you want to see how many other widget companies there are in this radius or zip code, you can do that. Another thing too, just so all our data, you use our data every single day. Um, you use it without even knowing it. You know, if you're doing like a, a restaurant search in your city and you're you're pulling up like where the nearest burger king is for example you pull that up you get the address and then it takes you there we're the ones who provide that data to the googles and bings and so on and so forth of the world same thing with like uh lexus onstar we provide them with that sort of all the information if you're looking to go to a party um, wherever located in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, let's say, if I've got the address, put it into you know my phone that pops up with all the directions that is all that information is through us. So you know again, I'm not trying to brag. I don't mean to. My whole point is our data is is very uh, fresh and very clean that we do uh, updates every day in the hundreds of thousands into the database. Now is our data completely accurate? Absolutely not. Data changes every day, every second, every hour. So things change on that, but our data is very, is, is as accurate as there is out there. Any other questions? I don't see any in the chat, but I have another question. I was just wondering, could you um, pull up a nonprofit, for example, so people can see what that looks like? Like, sure. for example, the San Francisco SPCA. Let's pull that up. SPCA. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so we can pull this up and review this. There's a phone number. Showing you too that they also are on Facebook and Twitter. They deal with camps, animal hospitals, and dog training. Here's a profile on them. Number of employees is 200. Again, the sales volume is going to be based off an of algorithm. The years in the database and our database is going to be 19. You can see the management directory. So it's quite a bit of information, as you can see.
and then what they 2004 they were the spay neuter clinic and remained that up until 2013 and then 2014 you can see uh under jason whitehall they changed to san francisco spca so it's quite a bit of information and i think very helpful information too Does that help you? Um, yes, I I believe they're a nonprofit, um, but I don't see that in their um, NAICS code. But yeah. I guess they have some for-profit services like their veterinary clinic. Correct. So Correct. I'm trying to think of some something that's purely a nonprofit organization. Um, uh, let's do this. Let's go back. And let's pull, oh gosh, we did, we, we did that. Uh, no, here, it doesn't matter. We'll still, we can still change that. Let's do, let's go. So nonprofit organizations, let's do that. And let's do it in, again, we'll do it in San Francisco. Let's update the count. I don't know if it's coming up. And we have a suggestion in the chat uh, okay. to try the Internet Archive, which is a local nonprofit. And they Internet. partner with the library, so that's a good one. Okay. Let's do this by. Internet Archive. Yes. And they're also in San Fran? Yes. Okay. Again, their primary is going to be the internet service. Same thing, data processing. But you know, again, that's going to be their that's going to be their primary. And yet, they're you know they're probably written as a five hundred one c three two. Okay, and it looks like we've got another question. Okay. Let me see if I can unmute this person. Hi, can you hear me? Go ahead, yes. Tatra. Yes, I just have a question. I've been listening off and on because I'm at work. And when I get my nonprofit up and running, how do I get my name into a database like this? You will be by you'll you'll have certain filings with the Secretary of State. Yes, I did that one. And that will, how long would you do that? I did it March 31st. I'm not ready to go up and running yet. I still have to, um, I did my 1023EZ. Sure. And I'm just waiting for that to come back and then I'll be ready to file. You, you know, I, I would give it four to six months to mm -hmm. uh, just to be on the safe side. Okay. Once it gets up, but it'll definitely be, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you had, uh, um, we're on or heard it or not, but we get all, our, all of our business data. We telephone verify 
all of our businesses at least once, if not up to twice a year. Um, we get government data, you know, utility connects, all that sort of information, internet research. So you, it won't be a matter of if, it'll be when you'll be, you'll be in here. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Good luck with your nonprofit. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Anything else? Okay. I don't see anything right now. Um, you know, I have my screen freeze on me, so I may have missed some questions. If anybody was trying to ask, um, please retype your question or raise your hand and I'll call on you. I want to make sure we get everybody's questions. And Jereen, too, you're more than welcome to um, email me. I can give you my email address, too, if you'd like. Okay. If you want to tell me, I will type it in the, should I put it in the chat, or do you want to just have everybody go through our views side text? Yeah, I'd rather have you go through the. Okay, uh, I'll retype our email. And we'll go from there. Okay. So there's the email for our department. Um, we check the email every day. Okay. And always um, send us an email or call us, visit in person. I also want to remind everyone that everyone who's registered for this will receive a link to the recording so you can review the information. And then, and Tandra, is that your hand from before? Or do you have another question? From before. Oh, okay. All right. No, no question. No question. <laughs> Okay, is there anybody else who has a question? Okay, Mike, um, do you have anything else that you wanna say before we wrap it up? No, uh, that's it for me. Like I say, we really appreciate everybody taking the time out of their schedule to be with us today. And again, it's, thank you Doreen uh, for hosting this and we, Absolutely love your library. I was just out there a couple of years ago um, doing some training uh, with another cohort of mine. And it just, it, it truly is, and I'm not saying this just because you guys are online, but it's truly one of the most beautiful libraries that I have been in. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Well, with that, I want to thank Mike Dugan from reference solutions for presenting today. And I want to thank everybody for coming. And please visit us again. We have uh, events weekly. It's available on our website under the events tab. And I want to wish everyone a wonderful day. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Doreen. Thank you, everybody.